started one summer night, 2018. Her due date was June 23rd, or no, that was her birthday. Her due date was June 22nd. She was born June 23rd, 1237 p.m. She weighed seven pounds, one ounce, and was 22 inches long. But she had a little bit of a cone head, so when she had her checkup, her first checkup, she was like 21 and a half inches, so sometimes a cone head can make them a little longer. But she's pretty, she's pretty long for uh, a girl. <clears throat> and then she was right at seven pounds, so she was my smallest baby, thankfully. I had to have a C-section with William, so I was just praying and hoping that I could have a VBAC with her. I just did not want to endure another C-section. Hey, props to you if you schedule your C-sections. -section, C I don't do well with that recovery. So I just, I wanted to do everything in my power to prevent that. And you know, it is a lot riskier to go for a VBAC after a C-section because you risk, you risk uterine eruption. Am I saying that right? Your uterine wall can erupt, eruption. <laughs> I, it's very risky okay I don't I feel like I'm all tongue-tied right now I think what they say can be the riskiest is a medicine or be back especially they don't recommend inducing you they really want labor to come on its own you can be induced but it's just a lot riskier that because the medicine can wear down that wall wear down that scar even more which can result in eruption I don't think it's Pitocin it's it's whatever they give you to thin out your cervix I don't know the name of that medicine anyways so I was determined to prevent c-section so pretty much starting in June because my due date was the 22nd so pretty much the start of June I just started doing things that would you know kind of induce labor so like they say pineapple juice spicy foods lots of walking walking stairs they say nipple stimulation I never um I never pumped before but like I remember if I if I was going to go past my due date I would have gotten out my pump to like start pumping because that nipple stimulation can really start bring on contractions you know after my baby when I was breastfeeding, I would still contract because it just helps your uterine, your uterine shrink back and heal better. Your uterus, I feel like I'm just not speaking right today. So drink lots of pineapple juice, ate lots of spicy foods, and then they also say sex can really bring it on. So ladies, if you are past the due or nearing your due date, get busy because they say the semen can bring on contractions. So just uh, how it works. So anyways, I did everything in my power to bring on this labor and I, did, I started having Braxton Hicks in June. You know, it's just like really light, inconsistent contractions. It's just kind of like weird tightening in your uterus. I definitely experienced that. I never had that with my boys. So I thought that was kind of a good sign. So I remember it was June 22nd when I actually went into labor on her actual due date. I remember I went over to my parents because my sister just got home from Australia. She's actually the godmother. She was always saying, you have to wait to have her till I get home and good old little miss listened. But I remember I was having a nap. The boys, my mom was playing with the boys in the playroom and I was having a nap and I woke up and I had this, I mean, it was a lot stronger than what the Braxton Hicks felt like so I was like hmm could it be went into the kitchen my sister brought back Tim Tams I don't know if you've ever had a Tim Tam but it's like these great Australian chocolate wafers amazing had like six of those felt another contraction I was like hmm then I thought well if this is my last day of freedom I mean I shouldn't say that but like my last day before chaos I want to go shopping so we went to Marshall's <laughs> My mom, sister, the two boys, and me, because Marshall's was like our obsession this summer for whatever reason. So we went to Marshall's and I experienced two more definitely stronger contractions. So I was like, hmm, it's definitely like these definitely are building up. And I definitely, I just had that feeling like it's time. She's coming. She is coming. And there's nothing I can do to prevent this right now. Went home. This was like 7 p.m. And I was experiencing at least two contractions every hour. And they say, um, so how you know when to go to the hospital is you want them five minutes apart. I think it's the 511 rule. So you want to experience them every five minutes. You want them to last a minute long. And I don't know what the other one is. Uh, you want them to last a minute long for I don't know but like how you know when you're ready to go to the hospital is like when you're experiencing a, cr a contraction and you're like so hunched over in pain you can hardly walk you can hardly breathe so that's how I knew like that's what I knew to expect and I also was going to do everything in my power to prevent going to the hospital um too early because I just I didn't want to I didn't want medi I didn't want medicine to interfere um I know that was a 
played a big role in um, James and William's birth, just getting the epidural way too soon, and it pretty much like stops labor for me. They say it doesn't, but it stops labor for me. It just does. So anyways, I remember my doctor though, since I was going for a VBAC, said I don't want you laboring at home too much, so come in as early as you can. But again, I was determined to just like go as long as I could without medicine. Anyways, this is like 7 p.m. I go home and I'm experiencing at least two an hour and they're very inconsistent. You know, some would be like 30 seconds, some would be 40 seconds. But I remember like throughout the evening, I definitely thought, yep, it's gonna happen tonight. So my mom was on call. Actually, my mom and sister came over to sleep over so that they could stay with the boys if we had to go to the hospital in the middle of the middle of the night. I didn't want to go quite yet because I knew like it was still very early on. They weren't that painful. And um, we'll be right back. I hear little mama. Okay, I got little mama. <laughs> she was waking up, so she's gonna have to be with me to finish this because we gotta get her brother soon, actually. But do you guys like her headband? I know it's a little extravagant, but you are my first girl and I am just, I gotta deck you all out. What I was saying, I'll try to wrap this up because I really don't want this too long. Okay, so anyways, my mom and sister stayed the night because I had in my mind like, no, I'm gonna try to hold off to like three or four a.m. But the contractions definitely were picking up. And you know, I told Brian, I'm like, go to sleep, let's go to sleep. Let's try to get some sleep, even though I knew I wasn't sleeping. But I, I wanted him to get some sleep. So he went to bed at 11, we went to bed at 11, but big mama could not sit still. I was going up and down the stairs, pacing the house till like 4 a.m. I don't know how it, that much time, even how I even let that much time go by. But like I would lay down here or there and I remember I actually laid down at 3 a.m. finally. I'm like, I'm just gonna try to go to sleep because when I laid down, it, it definitely slowed down. They say gravity works in your favor, so that's why it's good. When you do go into labor to walk and go up and down stairs because the gravity will help pull that baby out. And so um, I was like, you know what? I'm tired, I'm gonna try to get some rest. So I laid down at 3 a.m. and about 45 minutes later, I was woken up with the most painful contraction in my life. I will always remember this, I was like, Oh, just moaning. Oh, I thought I was gonna die. So anyways, I woke up with the worst feeling in my life. I'm like, will you wake up already? <laughs> to Brian, I'm like, enough. He's been asleep for like five hours at that point. Yeah, it was 4 a.m. So big boy had been asleep for like five hours at this point, sleeping as, as sound as can be while big mama's suffering. So I'm like, wake up already. Wake up already, enough. That was enough. Not fair your father's sleeping while I'm suffering. So I remember I went to the bathroom. I could hardly walk because um, these contractions were pretty consistent at this point and they're happening really close together. And I like just felt more pressure, not like I needed to push, but just like pressure down there. Yeah, it was just uncomfortable. Like when those contractions come on, you just start like, heating up i felt like i was gonna throw up diarrhea pee pass out all at the same time it's just the most uncomfortable feeling of your life anyways we left i knew my mom and sister would be fine they knew if we they woke up and we were gone that we were at the hospital off we went so we arrived around 5 a.m i mean at this point i could like hardly walk i was just like I don't know. You're just not yourself when you experience those painful contractions. Brian kept trying to talk to me. I literally wanted to be like, come here and just squeeze his neck as hard as I could. Just wanted to give him a good old neck ring and that's all. Because I did not want to be talked to. It's just painful. Oh, it's painful. And I wanted that epidural. So they checked me. I was already seven centimeters, seven centimeters dilated, which was really impressive. I was like, hell yeah, I made it this far. But I, I didn't think I could go any farther. I mean, those, they were happening every minute or they were lasting about a minute long and they were happening every about four to five minutes. So they were really strong contractions. Um, I remember the nurse was so nice. She would help me like breathe through it as they were getting me all checked in. And um, anyways, I was like, please get me that epidural fast. So finally he came in at six to do the epidural. And I told him I didn't want that strong, but he said, and he said he just was gonna do the dose, like the standard dose they give everyone. But he gave me the full hanging bag. I should have known like what to specify, which I now know for the fourth kid exactly what I'm going to specify. I don't want the hanging, the hanging bag with the constant drip going in me because I literally couldn't feel anything. Your leg, my legs swelled to the size of tree trunks. You can't feel it. It's just, I don't like that. I want to be like, I just want a little to take the pain off the edge off, but I still want to feel 
everything. I just don't want it so bad that I can't feel anything. So anyways, that happened. I said, you know what, I'm just gonna take a little nap. This is 6 a.m. So I went, I took about a two hour nap, woke up, they checked me, nothing. There was no progress. I was like, damn it. Because for whatever reason, the epidural just stops everything for me. And I even asked them about that. They're like, no, it's <laughs> little mama. Did you guys hear that? What did I say? We cannot be doing this on camera. Be right back. I gotta go change her. Okay, so we're back. Little mama has some clean pants. I don't blame you. I know that feels good. I do. I do. Oh, are you are you comfortable? Are you you don't look too comfortable. What are you trying to do? You want to do this? I know. I know. This thing's a little ridiculous. Just let mama put it on you for one more hour. What? 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 Anyways, no progress. They're like, we're gonna have to give you a little pitocin to speed this up because it's been two hours. You were progressing beautifully, and then nothing. I'm like, hmm. So I said, can you turn down the epidural? I don't, I don't like that. I can't feel my legs. Can you turn it down to a five? It was at a, out of one, one out of 10, it was at a 10. I'm like, I don't want this full thing, but I, I should have like written a, a birth plan and um, like gone over that with them beforehand, but I didn't do that. So anyways, I said, can you turn it down to a five, please? So they gave me a little bit of Pitocin, which I was really nervous about just like, it being more risky um, going for a VBAC, but they gave me a little bit of Pitocin and turned down the epidural. And then within an hour, I was 10, 10 centimeters dilated and time to push. They got the doc, they called in the doctor and I think I pushed for 30 to 40 minutes before she was out. But I remember they kept asking, um, they kept asking, do you want to see a mirror? Do you want to see the mirror? Cause they can put the mirror at the end and you can like see when she starts to crown. And I was like, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. Brian doesn't want to see that. I don't want the mirror. And um, they kept asking me, I'm like, no. And finally, I was kind of stuck. I was at like the 30 minute mark. I was kind of stuck. Like I just needed a really big push. But I was getting tired, you know, getting a little exhausted. So they asked, um, the one of the nurses was like listen every time for whatever reason when I bring in the mirror it just gives those women it gives you moms that motivation because like when you can see it you just get so determined and you get more motivated that the baby will just pop out so I was like fine bring in the mirror <laughs> so they brought in the mirror and within I think it was that first push popped her out because for whatever reason like the head was so close I was I just wasn't getting her like fully to come through she just needed one big old push and um so yeah brought in the mirror and that's what i needed to get her out so <laughs> so we got her out and then they now have it where they wait to give her their first bath um till an hour later just so that mom and baby can have that bonding she did poop she had a big poop all over and um the umbilical cord was like wrapped around her her body thankfully not her neck but it was wrapped around her body and um oh you, you should get hungry i'm gonna have to go soon but yeah so i had that bonding that one-on-one -on -one contact you know but like at this point i'm like listen i get plenty of bonding with them at home so like i'm i'm not like the most strict like i have to have her i have to have that skin on skin it was it was very special she got her first picture and everything looked good i they, you know, they have the whole NICU team there on standby and they had to clean out her lungs a little because she did poop. So she had a little of that meconium in her lungs, but they were able to clean that out. And I remember at first she kept like gagging the first day and would like sounded really congested just because she did have that poop in her. But that cleared up within a couple of days. Thankfully, she latched right on. I do breastfeed her. I breastfed my boys as well. And um, I will say like, I had the hardest time with James, my first, but she was my third and thankfully she latched like it was nothing. Like she'd been on the teat for nine months. You know, I did have a lack where I deliver. Thankfully there was a lactation specialist. So she would come in every three hours just to like help make sure. Cause I definitely got sore and got a little raw for about two days. So I put on a lot of ointment that helped because you know, their latch isn't that good. You got to help them. So it wasn't like it was perfect. I, I definitely had to work at it for a couple of days before 
before I felt like I had it down. So thankfully the lactation specialist was able to help me. Yeah, you know, this is part one, just her, her labor and delivery story. My battery is about to die and I got to feed her and go get her brothers. So let me know if you have any questions or if I didn't cover anything, I can do a part two. If you want to see how the first month or two have been, how she's been sleeping, how we sleep, where she sleeps. It's also time for me to get back into makeup. So just let me know what you want to see. I think I covered it, everything, but thankfully I was able to have a successful VBAC, which is what I prayed for. It's what we prayed for. Are you going to talk to me? Oh, yeah. She will not smile. Oh, that's so sweet. She's two months, so she now smiles. She coos. It's just the sweetest thing ever. I love you. So thank you guys for listening, and, um, you know, feel free to leave comments. I'd love to hear your guys' birth stories. If any of you recently just had a baby, or even if you had a baby five, ten years ago, 20 years ago, whatever, let me know how um, your birth stories were, you know? Everyone has a different birth story. Every baby's different. It's just part of life the beauty of life everyone has a different story and that's what makes you unique so thank you guys for watching thank you for listening i'll see you in my next video bye